Hello, my name is Matthew Bodie. I'm a professor at the University of North Georgia, but I'm also the president of the Georgia Conference of the American Association of University Professors, or the AUP. I hope the new academic year is getting off well for you. As you may know, the national AUP has censured the university system of Georgia. In this short video, I want to explain the changes made to tenure by the Board of Regents that merited this action from the nation's oldest and most respected faculty association. The changes have damaged higher education in our state, and you can help the AUP pressure the USG and the Regents to undo the harm. And at the end of this video, I will tell you how. First, a short summary of how we got here. In September 2020, the USG formed a working group to study post-tenure review, the review all tenured faculty undergo every five years. That group included Regents, administrators, and a minority of faculty. And they issued a report in June of 2021. In September of 2021, the Regents published a first draft of policy revisions to tenure and annual evaluations. The Georgia AUP spent the next month voicing vigorous protests in meetings with USG staff, contacting the Regents, and informing faculty of the impending danger to tenure. In October, the national AUP threatened to censor the university system if indeed it went through with these changes. The next day, the Regents unanimously voted to forward the changes. As you know, the Regents are the 19-member body mandated by our state constitution to oversee our university system. They are appointed to staggered seven-year terms by governors. And while the Regents haven't publicly said why they made these changes, it should be noted that appointments to the Board of Regents often go to financial supporters of a governor's political campaign. The changes made to evaluations affect all faculty of any status. These changes include improvement or remediation plans after subpar annual reviews, adding student success in some measures to all evaluations, and authorizing a five-point Likert scale to these evaluations. Two other changes need to be noted as well. First, a five-year review of administrators was implemented. Second, and more dangerous for tenure, the regents gave themselves the power to make tenure decisions, to overtake campus tenure decisions. In this video, I want to concentrate on the changes to tenure. It's important to define tenure at this point. What do you have when you are awarded it? Here I quote from the AUP's investigation report issued before it voted to censure the USG. Tenure is an indefinite in contrast to a fixed term appointment that can be terminated only for adequate cause. To terminate an, a tenured appointment for adequate cause, that is for lack of professional fitness, administration first must demonstrate to a duly constituted faculty body in an adjunctive hearing of record that the subject's faculty member's professional conduct or performance warrants dismissal. The current USG grounds for removal policy lists specific examples of misconduct or poor performance that would be reviewed in such a hearing. Furthermore, the AAUP regards this hearing as part of the basic academic due process required when administration wants to terminate a professor for cause. Academic due process is the protections you have against political and administrative corruption. It's akin to the system of merit that all federal employees go through. It's designed to keep us from being pawns of political patronism. And this merit is determined in higher education by the judgments of your faculty peers, not administrators alone. Basic academic due process and more was part of the USG policy before October of 2021. But the vote by the Board of Regents that month erased much of this process from the USG's post-tenure policy. And in response, the AUP deemed the USG as having tenure and name only. In short, in other words, the Regents gutted tenure. And by removing post-tenure review from under the rights defined in the system's dismissal for cause policy, the USG ended its long-standing agreement with AUP tenure principles. In short, the changes to post-tenure review policy implicitly added another cause for termination, that is, failure to fulfill an improvement plan. But while adding that cause, the Regents erased your right to a peer-led hearing that would judge that cause. This move to erase some of your rights by the regents is unprecedented. That's why the AUP censored a university system for the first time in its history. The AUP will always defend your rights of academic due process. The USG's defense of these changes have noted there will be new policies developed by campus committees, and USG awaits final drafts of those committees for its approval. But whatever these local policies turn out to be, they cannot override or contradict the USG policy. This is why the system was censured. 
because its policies are the benchmarks for our, all schools in our state. In light of that, over the last year, the AAP has reminded the USG that as laudable as any campus-based policies might be, they are not what the AUP means by academic due process. It's clear that the changes to tenure by the regents merited censure by the AUP. The changes have marred the reputation of the university system. Faculty searches have and will continue to be affected by these changes. The AUP is not alone in predicting these outcomes. In a September 2021 memo to the USG, Professor Barbara Biesecker, then the chair of the executive committee of the University Council at UGA, wrote the policy changes unmistakably undermines tenure at our great institution and puts our ability to recruit, hire, and retain the best faculty at immeasurable risk, end quote. The USG Faculty Council, the collection of faculty leaders from all 26 schools and myself as an ex officio member, urged the, re urged the regents to table its October vote to no avail. This past spring, the Faculty Council overwhelmingly passed a resolution condemning the tenure changes. That resolution also offered the AUP simple fixes to the regents. And those fixes to the policy are indeed simple. The AUP has asked the regents to put the post tenure review policy back under the dismissal for cause policy, thus reestablishing the right to a peer led hearing at the possible point of termination. And remember that hearing is only a recommendation to the president. We're all for accountability. But academic due process demands tenure accountability remain primarily with faculty. And this hearing ensures that principle. While many schools have been removed from the censure list after improving their practices and procedures, they have to work with the AUP to get there. But sadly, at present, the USG and the regents have not signaled any desire to edit the changes and thus affect remove themselves from AUP censure. The USG and its Board of Regents face a choice reinstate tenure or remain censured. And you can help them do the right thing by contacting the regents and the USG Chancellor Sonny Purdue and tell them there is only one way to end the censure, the simple fix the AUP has offered. Their contact information is available on the USG website, usg.edu. And finally, you can join the fight to protect tenure at aaup.org.